Manchester called um, Citizens Eye. It's a community news agency. I set it up on the 7th of January 2008, and it's for community groups or individuals of faith or no faith, a demographic group, the disability, LGBT, uh, and a demographic area, um, a demographic group or a geographic area, so like a, an inner city of a state, uh, a, a local town, uh, a market town, something like that, to be able to come together and share all their news, information, events, training, facilities for hire, they want to have the facility, etc. Um, and what we did is stumbled across, and I think that's why I've been invited here to speak to you today, because I've come up with this kind of concept by accident. Okay? There's no plan. So please don't think, don't ask for the business plan because it doesn't exist. To train 2012 community reports for 2020. Um, we've got 15 volunteer run news agencies. Uh, covering Leicester and Leicestershire. We're very tightly geographically focused. We don't cover anywhere else. I wouldn't report on anything in Birmingham or London. Um, and basically, we've got all of these news agencies here. So starting from the top, Hat News, here and there, it's for refugee and asylum seekers. The first three editors of that have actually all got their status there as well. Um, IDOMEG stands for Inside and Out, and that's an ex-offenders news agency uh, that I set up uh, about ex-offenders simply because when I started Citizens Eye, I did it the day I came out of prison. Um, WAVE is for young people, and we've actually got something here, it's a 16 page newspaper that comes out the last Wednesday of every month inside the Leicester Mercury, so we're actually doing citizens journalism embedded inside the mainstream media, we've actually run all of the community media side now, the community journalists for the Mercury, and I'm actually retained to do that as well, I've got five desks actually in the room. Um, senior I, older people, uh, started simply because Two ladies that are the editors, Nancy and Vicky, said to me, John, you're always banging on about young people's issues, we've got issues as well, what are we going to do about it? So I started seeing you on. DZ is about disabilities, um, and it's not for just for people with disabilities, it's about disabilities, that's awareness raising, and I'll come on to more about that. Down Not Out, homelessness. CAPS, community action photographers, we're trying to reintroduce black and white photojournalism into uh, photography in Leicester and Leicestershire to capture the issues without any of the, 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 the colour of the people. Um, Dad's News Agency, DNA, that's a really successful one. How are you? Mental health and well-being. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? I don't feel too good. You know, so it's one of the using words that people like. eco Eye, green issues. Bands and Beats is about music and entertainment because we found that that wasn't being covered um, where we were in Leicester. Um, we've got some others as well that have recently set up. We've got a Women's News Agency that's in development at the moment and also one for the LGBT community. Hey, John, I think your Minecraft does <coughs> Project your voice. Oh, no, can everyone say hello? Can you say something? Oh, okay. I apologise if you missed anyone. Is that better? Is that on? Yeah, okay. Um, and again, we use a whole raft of social media here across the bottom, especially um, apps for iPhones. Citizens Eye Radio, we use quite a lot of iPadio. Guys were sitting down here earlier, they're doing a separate talk, I think. Um, we do a lot of iPadio around uh, the Special Olympics, which is something we covered, which I'll come on to in a minute. Um, We've got our own internet radio station called Panch Paddy Radio. We've actually been given the space by the local NHS, Leicester City um, Authority. And you can see them, my two boys are in the middle doing that. And we do quite a lot of social media work as well with the young people for WAVE. This is the Young People's Newspaper, Leicester WAVE. The name actually came from uh, an article that was written by uh, one of the young people that were involved in it. She talked about this tsunami of young people sweeping over Leicester and Leicestershire, and that's where the name came from. And um, these are some of the front pages that you see here. We pay £2,000 a month to the Leicester Mercury to have full editorial control over that. Um, and we've just done the ninth issue, and we've got the funding will run out in December. And what we've done now is we've started working on an advertising model, whereby we will go after three or four advertisers, like the police and the NHS and local, uh, local authorities and stuff like that, who obviously have a budget to get out to young people. And it's been quite successful, so we're hoping to be able to continue that into next year. The picture you see in the, um, the top right hand corner uh, is something called a watt box, which my, my colleague runs. Uh, and basically, it's a Stanley tool box that breaks down into three parts and it's full of media equipment. And we've got 20 of them at the moment covering the city and the county. And every week, they go into the eight main libraries across the city of Leicester. And young people use them to create newsletters and stuff. And we go into schools and we do that as well. But once all that content's been created for their own local newsletters and newspapers, they start. The newspaper club comes and visits me at the Mercury and then the content goes into WAVE each month. 
We set up Citizens ITV recently. I don't know if uh, you heard me say this morning about this really swanky building we've got in Leicester, a bit like this one called the Phoenix Government Digital Media Centre, which hit some financial difficulties. So we've been able to get in there because we've got space in there as well um, to have use of the facilities. And what we've done with Citizens ITV is uh, working with the Journals Project, which is part of the Cultural Olympics. They've got 500 young people that are going to train to catch all the cultural events and stuff up to the Olympics. We've gone into partnership with them. And that's actually meant that Citizens ITV, the same equipment, can be used for Wave TV, for young people, Journals TV, but also what we've done is reversed it round. So we've got use of the facilities at the Phoenix for free in return for providing them Phoenix TV. So whenever there's a, an opening of a film or an event that's on or, or a corporate event, basically what we do is we provide the same sort of coverage for them. So that's worked out really well. Saw Community Magazine. This community magazine have been going for a couple of issues. Uh, the, the, the main sports and health and lifestyle magazine have been going for a couple of issues. And uh, I, I reported about it on Citizens Eye. And they gave us some free advertising and they said, would you like to have 16 pages to do community news? And I said, yes, but only if you give us a separate cover. So what you'll find is that's the main sports image here on the front of the magazine. And if you turn it over, there's 16 pages going that way, simply because our community groups would not pick up that magazine with the images that they have on the front. Um, so we did, we've done six versions so far. The last <coughs> issue, we've reintegrated Saw Community back into the main body of the magazine, so that the next time we have a double-sided one, three quarters of the magazine will be on the Olympics, and uh, the back quarter will be on the Paralympics, and discuss for a separate slide. We run a community news cafe every Tuesday in the local, um, local shopping centre, if you like, High Cross, and I've been to Leicester. And basically we get between 35 and 50 people every Tuesday, 9.30 to 10.30. People know they can just drop down. We have a professional journalists from BBC Radio Leicester and the Mercury will drop down and have a chat with people. And we use it as an opportunity to gather information and news and all of our community reporters come together and network. As I said earlier, Leicester was very lucky to have the um, Special Olympics in 2009. And a lot of people have been disappointed with the legacy of that. Um, there's a lot of good stuff that happened, like you know, bus drivers got... Um, learning disability awareness training, which obviously helps any other community group as well. But not much was made of the legacy beyond this DVD with all the, the usual suspects. So what we've done is we've actually, using our DZ Disability News Agency, created a specific news team now about people that are involved as volunteers or as athletes in the Special Olympics. And they're actually documenting their process up to London 2012 and also um, the Olympics. And that's been a real, um, a real opportunity here for us to do something to the point where how we've done with the Mercury by having the wave in there. We're not selling more newspapers, we're bringing people that don't normally read newspapers to the Mercury. What we've done is we've got a trial that's going to happen where people from DZ will actually create specifically learning disability news themselves to go into a branded column. So that's going to be quite an interesting one that we're going to do in the next couple of months. Community Media Hub. We've run these before, community media centres, and we just thought it'd be great if we could get these 2012 people that we're training getting them ready for the Olympics. If we could get them together somehow and actually offer them out as media teams to other festivals that took place in the city. Um, and so we came up with this model for uh, a community media hub and all the things that you could do. And we trialled it at Skyride, which was on bank holiday in, on the Sunday. 12,500 people cycled around Leicester as part of the Sky branded Skyride. And what we did is we actually had 51 media volunteers that captured the event we took about six, 700 photos, I think it was on our Flickr photo stream. Uh, we got all of those, a selection of those into the local newspaper, um, also onto the, uh, the local newspaper's website. BBC Radio Leicester used that um, coverage as well. And you can see there the Phoenix with all the cyclists outside. And here's the media centre that we ran here with, um, you can't, probably can't see it on there, but it actually says Media Hub Reporters, so we have all of the t-shirts and stuff. And it's been fantastic to be able to go out there and capture all of the different makeup that happened. The aim is to recruit and train 2012 people for the Olympics. We've got about 800 so far. And what we've done is we're going to run throughout the Olympics and the Paralympics, but we're actually starting in January um, 2012. And what I do is I blog every Thursday for Saw Community only about getting ready for the Olympics and the Paralympics. Phoenix Square has been quite useful. Obviously cinemas, cafe, screen room, training room, so it's an ideal venue. But what we've done as well is we've reached out to the local tourist office and we've created packages not only of workspace, accommodation and transport and also a package of events as well. So if you're visiting from across the world, 
you can actually come to us and we can arrange for your accommodation, transport down to the Olympics every day, there'll be a coach outside the Phoenix. We're trying to knit together our own legacy of the Olympics because we will have experienced all three parts of the Olympic family. And as I said earlier, the thing that was important to us was we had a legacy. So we've identified a building and what we're hoping to do is create a community news museum, a yeah, museum, if you like, but also we have a community media hub. Okay, and that community media hub will basically be a functioning museum. Uh, I'll just to the Press Association, but if you walked into this, um, turn, <laughs> turn this discussion. Uh, you were part of this guy. Talking to me, yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> At last. Okay. Um, we, we're viewing it very much that 2012, the world comes to London. We've already got it in Leicester because of our uh, ethnic um, makeup from a very diverse city. So basically, what's next for us? We've invented a community media week uh, in November where you can find out all of that information. And uh, what's really interesting, that's really interesting, the last couple of weeks that's happened is the Media Trust are interested in coming to see the model that we've got uh, in light of the report they did recently. And also, I got an email uh, at the beginning of uh, last week from the director of the Community Media Association saying, We've been watching you for quite a while. <coughs> um, can you get in touch? We'd like to join your community media week and maybe roll it out across the UK. So that's quite interesting. Thank you very much.